Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here today. I am so honored to be joined by the legendary trailblazer, Kurt Franklin himself, and the woman behind it all, Tammy Franklin, is also in the house. <laughs> I am honored to, to meet with both of you. you. You really are a picture of what it looks like to be happily married in Jesus um, for us, and, and I'm just so appreciative. And today we get to talk about something really exciting you guys are doing, The One, a new dating TV series that y'all are hosting and mentoring couples in. So let's jump right into that. How does that come about? Well, it's good talking to you again. And I am again, you're right. I'm, I'm excited to be sitting next to the legend, Tammy Franklin. And, you know, even listening to you, even in the introduction, I think it's just one of the reasons why I'm so adamant about really trying to have more real, honest, fun, engaging conversations to really try mm -hmm. to uh, repackage what we think this perfection looks like within the context of faith and believers. You know, this is not a perfect marriage. These are not perfect people. This this isn't a TV show, right? You know, this is flawed, you know, you know, humans living in a flawed wor world and, and, and nothing is going to be exempt from from those repercussions, from those influences, marriage, you know, ideals, health, sickness, right? And so uh, uh, we are great friends, but there is no Hollywood fairy tale marriage. And uh, even in the, uh, you know, confines of Christianity, uh, it can, you know, everybody feels the pressure to live up to what we think these pretty pictures need to be. But, but if you follow my career, I'm going to be antithetical of 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 every uh, image that comes my way that is counterintuitive to my real truth, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a flawed sinner saved by grace, and so I'm going to always show that uh, as much as I love Tammy, I am I am not a perfect husband, and this is not a perfect marriage, so that people can find their space in mm -hmm. it too. It's because yeah. people got to find because when you lift that bar so high and you make it so holy, then real people are sometimes now, oh, you know, just, you know, just forget about it. And I think that's why one of the biggest exoduses that we see from Christianity or from even traditional values is because people no longer feel that it's realistic that they can meet those type of goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, it's true. You said, you know, I'm glad you said that because I, my husband's a pastor and you know, we minister together all the time. And I always minister from a place of vulnerability. Like, I'm like, I'll tell y'all my business, tell you where I'm, I'm flawed and how Jesus helps me through. Because I find that that is the way it really does identify to people the best. But I've also seen the opposite where, you know, the pastors, they're not really pulling back the veil. So people feel like they're untouchable. I can never live up to that, you know? But I love that about you guys. And we, we've been able to see you live your life flawed and beautifully in public you know y'all have publicly talked about some real hard stuff that y'all go through family things things like that and um I, that's why I said what I said because it is a picture of to look up to um you, you show us how 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 to do it, it even in that way um let's talk a little bit about I, I saw I, I saw a preview of the first two episodes and something you said was very interesting Kirk and Tammy Feel free to, to share here if, if you feel led. But you said the way women and men are dealt with or even think about in the dating world is different. And I thought that was very good and very interesting. It's something we don't ever really talk about. Um, the expectations on women when it comes to dating, the expectations on men, it's, it's very different. And I'm talking about obviously in the kingdom, like kingdom people. Talk about that and why why you you brought that out. Well, it's it's I I'm I'm going to turn over to Tammy, of course, but I think that 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 sometimes there can be a misogynistic connotation mm -hmm. when it comes to things that are often sometimes very bibliocentric, right? And and so uh, women are continuing to try to find their space and their agency, right? When it when it when it when it when it comes to uh, how God made them, and for this this idea of them being a weaker vessel and 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 subservient to all of the 
executions of manhood is I think something that about the language needs to be reconstructed while at the same time fighting to hold on to principles that I think are that a man's job as a leader is to serve. And so while at the same time, there is a space and, and place for, for, for leadership and for strength, whether it was Ruth or Naomi, you know, um, we, we've got to be able to uh, bring agency of women to the forefront when it comes to uh, the Christian narrative of who they are. Yeah, I would agree to all of that. And I think that, you know, if you think about there's so there's been so much change within the world uh, when it comes to the rights of women. But then at the same time, whether it's Christian or non-Christian, the messaging for women women is so completely different. For instance, when we married, we both had children, but there was more emphasis on the fact that I had a child more so uh, than his. And I noticed it even within the dating show, I noticed, you know, even now, that that conversation is still uh, quite different. Um, you know, whether a woman can lead or not lead, uh, whether it comes to, um, you know, the, the salary gap, all those different things. And quite frankly, it still happens with, <laughs> within the church. I know someone now that is um, being considered for leadership um, and who is married, but um, her husband, you know, is not as heavily involved as she is. So there's question, well, can she lead then if, you know, if he's not? And so, you know, there's still, there's been so much progress, but there's still so much mm -hmm. more uh, to be done. And quite frankly, still within the, you know, our church community, church communities um, as well. And so it's not just with, you know, for non-Christian, uh, for Christian. And to me, it should be, we should be the driving force, but Quite often, a lot of our um, this way of thinking is still very, very old and outdated. Yeah, it's true. And I always love, I'm like, Jesus was the biggest advocate for women. Right? And I, you know, I always say a woman was the first one to preach the full gospel of Jesus Christ. He's risen. She was the one, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I, I'm with you there, Tammy. Um, but you know, I, we we have we do have ways to go. I wanted to ask you guys this too, because um, as you meet the couples in the show, you hear their stories about you know dating in this day and age, right? And I've been married; it's going to be fourteen years this year, so I, I don't really know app dating myself. Um, talk about for you how different is finding the one in this day and age than it was when you guys first came together. I'm quite sure as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I would not. I would not want to be dating right now. You're so mad. I'm quite sure as hell. I just, Crazy. yeah, you know, and 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 I don't have easy answers because you know, just because people are people of faith, don't mean that they have marriages that end up being perfectly successful. There's there's a, there's a guy that I work out with here at the gym, and I, you know, and he and his wife are happy to have married and. And you know they are, they are, uh, they are not believers. You know they don't they don't really have a belief system in anything. You know and and have no desire to, but happily married. Then you'll have some who are Christian and you know living in a house of tension and yeah. and not happy. Yeah. So what do you guys do? What advice could you give us for us that are married and we want to have that peaceful life that, you know, um, but also be like true believers and, you know, all that. What's your advice uh, for us? Well, I also think that 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 your belief system has to be in the person and not the system. Mm -hmm. You see, because you could be a follower of Jesus, but then also have an idolization of Christianity. Mm -hmm. So Christ, Christianity becomes the idol that you live up to and the stem that you live up to, and it makes the relationship impotent, right? And so it's, I think that there's got to be a normalcy that is included in the Christian journey. So, you know, you know, that 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 person's got to be your homeboy, you know, your spouse got to be your homegirl, y'all got to be buddies, y'all got to be able to play the park game, and, you know, and not ask for forgiveness afterwards, you know what I'm saying? You know, you got to be able to be human, there's yeah. got to be a human journey, it's because every man wants to have his ride or die, every man wants to have his buddy, 
you know, he could kick it with. But if you're always listening to Stephen Curtis Chapman, always at the house, and your dresses are always buttoned up to here, you know, and you always want to pray before dinner, after dinner, during dinner, while dinner, then, you know, you're not creating this human space. And there are some people that are so Christianized in their life because they are afraid of even their own humanity. That a lot of people hide behind the Bible because they don't like the real them. And so when you do that, then your spouse is not going to like the real you either because they're not going to know you. And so I think sometimes it's almost like water that doesn't have a place to go. Like when you see storms and when there's a lot of water in places that don't have the drainage for it, it can just lay still. And, and, and when it becomes still after a period of time, there's, 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 there's algae and there can be levels of fungus that when they, when they think sit still because uh, water has to keep movement for it to be able to for it to be healthy, right? And so marriages have to keep this moving. There has to be a rhythm. And sometimes people can get so stigmatized even with their Christianity that there forgets to be some movement. Mm, I love yeah. that. Yeah, men um, like so to for... chase. Men yeah. like to chase. Mm. That's yeah. true. That's good. That's good. Like That's chase. good. So if you're always at the same place singing hymns every day, then there's nothing to chase. <laughs> Um, so for those who, so, you know, people give Christians flack for even like going on to dating shows. Y'all are fully hosting a dating show where there there will be multiple partners and stuff like that. How do you how do you navigate that and, and what's going to come with that? I could care less about what the Christian community thinks of me. I could care less because. I see so much dysfunction even in that own community. You know, once, once again, I see all of the painted pictures in front of, oh, praise the Lord, people and God bless, but, it, but, but behind closed doors, people are broken and struggling and are not happy. So I'm good at 53. We can keep all of the, the, the masks and, and, and the puppets. I would rather be with broken people that I know are broken than be with people that don't know they're broken. Mm -hmm. So why did you guys want to do this, uh, the show? Like, what was your motivation to help people who are broken in an area find love? What, what kind of still inspired that? Let me say one more thing and I'm going to turn over there. It's I don't want to be around broken people because I think they're broken. I just want to be around people. I would rather be around anybody who wants to have honest, real conversations mm -hmm. and be able to engage. I don't want to make it seem like I'm the doctor that yeah. I'm here for the patient, but it's because I'm a patient. Once again, that's another Christian ideal that yeah. we have. You know, you're sick and I've got Jesus for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm well, and I have the answer. But, yeah. you know, oftentimes within our community, you know, we you'll hear say, you know, grace over perfection. But for some reason, whatever reason we don't really live up to that that standard uh we we say grace of perfection but we really really require perfection not only mm -hmm. from other people That's but good. from ourselves and we all end up walking around you know in this facade and like you said earlier um at the top of the uh the interview that you you lead with your um with your with with being transparent and honest and we need that in just in general and with us doing a show like this um you know whether you are working um at the bank that's not a christian location but you're there representing the light of god whether no matter what your uh job affiliation is no different from us you know we want to show that we can be people of faith but people of faith are still entertaining we can come alongside and coach anyone, not just people that profess our same faith. And so for me, that's what helped me with saying yes to something like this. I know that there are going to be a lot of people, and I know there are some who are like, oh, are, you know, it's already a thought that this, oh, it's a Christian dating show. No. And quite frankly, we want to be a part and do life with, with people and show the light of who we are within, no matter what circle that we're in. And I wouldn't have done a Christian dating show. <laughs> I don't even know what that would really look like. It well, obviously you, has you, to be, yes, you, you know. You can, only, you can only imagine. It's almost like singles ministries at church. Singles ministries. Yeah, exactly. That's why a lot of, be one of those. Things. Yeah, that's why most singles don't go to single ministries at church. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's just, yeah, I'm so, I'm. I'm but I'm, shout out I'm, to the churches that are doing it right. We're not saying, yeah, yeah. We're not yeah. saying that yeah. single ministry is church. Yeah. yeah. And well, there the are moments. 
ahead. And when Sorry. singles get together, they can listen to that new Kirk Franklin single too. Have you heard about that Kirk Franklin single? <laughs> I sure did. God can do all things. Yes, I did. <laughs> I yeah. heard it. It's what'd you say? Beautiful boy. That was oh. good. That was <laughs> y'all be nice. Good. Uh, it's really good. Yeah. So yes, I did hear it, Kurt. Talk about that and just that declaration that you're making with the song, All Things. No, is I want to know when you first heard it, what did you think? I just immediately was like, it's a jam. It's another one. <laughs> it's another one. <laughs> wow. Now, is that what you were expecting with me coming off of the Maverick City tour? Like, like what were you expecting from me next after that 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 last experience? Yeah, um, I don't know. I think, you know, I think right now, because of the time that we're living in, I, I, I'm i looking as a listener, right, of music, I'm looking for those declarations that are going to help us get through this season. And, and that's what it was, you know, um, I, I just don't know how you do it every time. It's like, you, you, you find the beat that's needed right now, the words that's needed right now, and and you do it wonderfully, masterfully, I'm and really you did it again. It's, it's really, really me. <laughs> I believe Bad. that. I believe it. <laughs> I know Bad. behind every every good man is a strong woman who's just the the biggest preacher. I would say this: the biggest preacher in every 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 man of God's life is his wife. That's the voice that he listens to the most. So. <laughs> Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, 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 and I'll be performing it at the music festival that I, that I, that I put together called Exodus. And uh, it's May 20th, 21st here in Irving, Texas with Natalie Grant, Chandler Moore, Naomi, Tasha Cobbs, Leonard, Yolanda Adams, Kara Shear, uh, Doe, Pastor Mike. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Melvin Criswell III, myself, it's going to be bananas. Yeah. That's amazing. Before we end, is there one final thing that, you know, uh, thinking about this time that we're in, the life that we live right now, um, you know, you guys are still bringing offerings of your gifts in some way to the world. What What would you say is a message that um, God has on your heart for the season that we're in? Uh, for me personally, um, as you mentioned, there is so much happening right now. Uh, just up the street from us, 30 miles away, uh, we just had another mass shooting. And if you're not, if you're not uh, connected to the Lord, um, living, abiding closely with him, not, not in perfection, but uh, I just heard someone say the other day that before you hit the panic button, uh, you know, hit, hit your knees. And uh, that may sound, you know, antiquated and old, but it is truly what is getting me through where I'm not living my life in fear because these people were at them all and some, you're not thinking that you're going to be at a mall and not come home. And, um, but I believe that in the process of us um, as believers, uh, God still wants us living a life. He wants us living. He wants us living and not living a life of fear. Mm, that's so good. Thank you so much. 